You're listening to a social justice podcast hosted by Nicholas Sperling, brought to you by The Flag Shop, and inspired by a social justice coloring book. Hello, this is a social justice podcast. I'm your host, Nicholas Sperling. Today, I'm joined by Aphrodite Janeway for a conversation about sex work. Uh, Aphrodite, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Sure. Um, I uh, My name is Aphrodite Janeway, as you said. Uh, I have a... Uh uh, I have an OnlyFans and a Pornhub account, which uh, I actively maintain. Um, and uh, I'm just about to get started seeing clients as well. Um, that's kind of my main shtick right now. It's kind of the big thing that I got going on. And that explains why you're here on the podcast today <laughs> to sure talk does. about sex work. And, and thank you so much for having this conversation. Yeah, it's um, good to be here. Yeah, it's actually, it's taken me a little while to find a guest for, for this podcast. Right. I've reached out to a few local organizations. They're at sort of full capacity, so it's hard to schedule someone. I've reached out to some local sex workers as well, and they've just been reluctant to share their, their stories because I guess it's a, it's a safety concern, which we'll, we'll get into a little bit later. But I like to start all of our episodes by just having a conversation about what the topic is. So can you maybe explain what sex work entails? Well, um, Sex work is the larger umbrella uh, mm-hmm. of um, people who uh, have sex for money. <laughs> um, uh, technically, I am a, uh, like, right now I do uh, online pornography. It's kind of my main avenue. Mm-hmm. Um, it's what I'm using to supplement my extremely low disability income. Okay. Um, and uh, I've been doing it for a couple of years now. Um, I enjoy it which is a, a really nice thing about it. Um, uh, and it's something that I would be doing anyways. <laughs> mm-hmm. So um, it's nice to be able to uh, to monetize our hobbies uh, as, uh, as so many of us end up doing. Uh, you know, they say if you're doing something you love, then it's not quite so much like work. And um, uh, as a disabled woman, that's particularly important to me, uh, finding something that is not uh, like really mentally and emotionally draining. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, that's kind of what I've been, that's what I've been looking for in, in work. Uh, uh, sex work also uh, includes um, uh, seeing clients uh, and, you know, out calls and in calls. It's not something that I'm uh, doing yet, uh, but I'm just about to get started because uh, I moved recently and I can't afford my rent. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to add some income to the to the pile, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, you know, like uh, you can't deny the, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the return on mm-hmm. uh, time invested. Uh, is significant. Um, right. Like as far as like, o- also as far as owning the means of production is concerned. Um, and, uh, and, you know, being in control of my own means of production, I, I sure am. Uh, and that's what I really like about it. Uh, it's something that I can do myself uh, with relatively little overhead. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, again, like that's, that's something that I as, as a disabled woman need um, in my employment, in my income. Right. And it, was it fairly uh, simple to get into uh, as far as setting up accounts that are necessary and, and I guess, finding that income? It depends. Um, there's definitely a lot of variability, of course. Uh, like setting up a Pornhub account, pretty easy. You just need uh, to be legal uh, and to be willing to prove it. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, as long as you do, then it's pretty easy. Same with uh, an OnlyFans. Uh, and, you know, you got to link up your accounts and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, that can be uh, given that we live in Canada, that can be a little bit more complicated because mm-hmm. nobody expects people to live anywhere other than America. So it's a U.S. based site. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. ev- everything is. Yeah, everything is. Uh, even monetizing my Facebook, uh, they're like, "Oh, you're in Canada? That's weird." <laughs> um, and uh, so I've been having trouble with that. And then, as, of course, when it comes to uh, the real nitty gritty, um, uh, seeing clients, uh, there's websites uh, that exist out there uh, which index uh, people. And of course, there's uh, certain websites cater to certain uh, audiences. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, there's one website uh, which shall remain nameless, uh, which caters to trans women uh, in primary. You have to pay them to list uh, yourself on the website. Oh. Um, and, uh, of course it is illegal, uh, to generally do that. Um, or at the very least, uh, you kind of get into the same thing that happened to OnlyFans where uh, credit card processors object morally, um, Mm. to, uh, the kind of, uh, uh, to the kind of content that's being generated. Uh, so they will not process your, uh, money Okay. Uh, so like I can't just give them like a debit card or anything like that. I actually have to buy Bitcoin. 
Oh my gosh. Uh, and pay them in that. Um, and I think also, um, I, uh, I need to get my girlfriend's help with it because it is complicated. Uh, I'm a, I'm a computer technician. My background is in IT, uh, and it's still complicated because you need to buy, uh, like in Euro. I, I don't know. I don't know the exact process. Yes. Yet. Right. Uh, it's complicated and, uh, she's done it like four or five times. And every time she does it, she makes a mistake and puts too much money in, uh, has trouble getting that money back out. It's almost as if it should be legalized and regulated. It almost is like that. Yeah. We <laughs> yeah. will get to that in a little bit. Yeah. Um, uh, just when it comes to the topic of sex work and, and what it is, I think a lot of people know the word prostitution. Yeah. Um, is sex work a replacement for that? Or is prostitution something that falls under the umbrella of sex work? I, I would consider it something that falls under the umbrella of sex work. Um, like uh, when most people think of sex work, uh, they don't think of pornography. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but pornography is, is uh, definitely under the umbrella of sex work. Mm -hmm. um, so porn stars are sex workers, uh, as are... Um, uh, like OnlyFans models, they're sex workers. Mm -hmm. um, even if the only people they're fucking are themselves. Uh, I can swear on this podcast. Oh, right? yeah, go yeah, for okay, it. Good, yeah. Uh, yeah, if the only people they're having sex with is themselves, then um, uh, they're sex workers. And then, of course, people people who actually uh, see clients, um, uh, they're also sex workers. And it, generally, uh, I think we use the words uh, escort and uh, what is the other word now? I can't remember it. Um, um. Not sure. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember the other word. But, yeah. I mean, yeah. I know that someone that worked as a, a dominatrix, for instance, who That's didn't have intercourse with other people, but yeah. was still under that category of sex. They're work still too. technically a sex worker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I used to see them back in the day. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that was my first introduction to uh, sex workers. As a matter of fact, uh, was a dominatrix. Oh, and is that sort of what prompted you to go? This is something I could do as well. Uh, that was pre-transition. So. Um, you know, maybe a tiny voice in the back of my head that didn't really understand the feelings I was having. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, uh, but uh, over time, certainly. Um, and, and uh, you know, like my avenue has, has been through porn for sure. Like mm -hmm. uh, I was definitely, I definitely look at porn and I'm like, I could do that. Um, and, uh, and like when I masturbate, I'm like, that was a pretty good one. It's kind of a shame. There's no camera in here for that. <laughs> uh, so uh, you know, like we, we got a fucking machine, uh, my uh, wife and I a while ago. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, that was when I was like, have to monetize this. Uh, I need, I, I would like to watch this. <laughs> and, uh, uh, what, what better way to do it than to, uh, than to upload it to Pornhub? And then other people who also want to watch it, they can do it too. And Pornhub will slide me a penny every time someone watches it. So. Right. And I guess when it comes to sex work being work, which is something we believe on this podcast, it certainly is. Um, can you write off something like that as a business expense or does the government not view this as legitimate work that, that you can do that with? That's a relatively good question. I'm not sure. Um, I know that we can euphemize a lot of things uh, like, you know, I can, I'm a model, for mm -hmm. example. Um, so uh, all the things that have to do with modeling. Um, uh, but uh, as a disabled woman, I, I don't make enough money to be eligible for any kind of tax breaks. So oh, I see. Uh, it's kind of pointless for me to do that. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's a nice idea. Right. Maybe um, things take off and you're making tons of money. It might become yeah. a thing. That, then I certainly would. Yeah. Like p pornography, I'm fairly certain, uh, is considered an actual, is is a tax write offable business uh, function. So mm -hmm. uh, I think that would work. I think you can do things like uh, you can write off uh, your bedroom, uh, you know, like a, a certain, per, a certain, percentage of your uh, of your room uh, or your house uh, could be used for work right uh, and then you can um, get a tax break on the square footage uh, mm -hmm. that I think that comes uh, f like off the rent that you pay uh, in toto yeah um, it's rent or um, the interest on a mortgage right okay mm -hmm. um, so yeah that's it's it's that's an option uh, again you know hopefully someday I'll be able to take advantage of that because it would be pretty cool um, but I don't know to what extent that goes. Uh, and then of course, uh, seeing clients is, uh, like if you're actually having sex with people, uh, that is, you're not allowed to do that. So, right. Um, if you're, you're allowed to, you're not allowed to purchase, uh, sexual activity. Um, right. So it would are, be your clients that would be. Yeah. They would be the ones that get punished. Right. Uh, but which is obviously still ridiculous, but uh, it's a little bit less ridiculous than coming after us. 
Mm -hmm. um, and certainly safer than coming after us. But, you know, it's just, it's, uh, it's ridiculous and, uh, and it shouldn't be that way. Mm -hmm. There are, I guess on that note, quite a few people that don't think sex work should be legal for whatever reason. Um, can you maybe explain if you even know why people are under that impression? Uh, well, as someone who used to live in America, um, I uh, tend to assume that it has to do with uh, uh, like a, a religious upbringing. Um, but, but I'm sure there must be larger, deeper philosophical underpinnings for that. Um, it is literally the, you know, the oldest profession, as the cliche is, is said. Mm -hmm. um, so there is that to consider. Um, but, uh, you know, especially like, you know, conservatives in the right wing, I don't, I don't really know. I, I can't understand the way they think about so many things. Um, like they're very hypocritical because who are the people that we tend to see the most? Uh, are right wing people. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm I, not sure. <laughs> I just found it quite interesting when I was doing some research for the podcast to see that there's so many countries where um, at least some aspect of sex work is criminalized. Yeah. And it could be, you know, specifically related to you're not allowed to open a brothel in this country or you're not allowed to sell yourself or you're not allowed to purchase the services of someone else or whatever it might be. There, the rules aren't always the same, but there's always this underlying some aspect of this should be criminalized for whatever reason. And yeah, I mean, I don't know what the reason is. So I figured <laughs> like, I, I think I think also it has to do it has to do with poverty in general. Mm -hmm. uh, like usually uh, the people who uh, are sex workers are starting from a position of poverty. Mm -hmm. um, like I'm I am doing it specifically to lift me uh, above the poverty line in Canada. Right. Um, but as, as someone on disability, I'm paid 60% uh, of minimum wage approximately. Um, so I need to make up that 40% somewhere if I want to, if I want to reach people who are being paid the least amount that it is legal to pay people in Canada. Right. Um, so uh, where is that 40% uh, going to come from? Um, uh, I cannot uh, get a normal nine to five job. Uh, the government and my doctor and I have all agreed that that is the case. Mm -hmm. uh, so to to force myself to do that um, would be hurting myself uh, to to do that. Um, when I do that, I I find that I don't have the energy to live my life. Uh, so like uh, like my health uh, declines, uh, my mental health declines, um, and uh, I can't maintain a social life. And I'm just miserable and. You know what? What is the point of being alive at that point? Mm -hmm. um, and I would rather not live like that. <laughs> so right, and I guess possibly some of the apprehension that people have around sex work is the idea that some people are being forced into it. Um, you might say that you're forced into it as a result of poverty, but then there's also cases of human trafficking, for instance, where people are literally being, you know, physically yeah. forced into. I, those yeah, situations. I, I definitely see. Like, I definitely see uh, those uh, a different difference between those two things um like um if you uh, like I, I on the one hand it, it is true like i am being forced uh to to do this uh i probably i probably would just have videos on pornhub uh if that was all i needed to do uh, mm -hmm. because because it is something that i enjoy uh, you know it's easy for me to just throw up a camera and just record it right um but um but when it comes to seeing clients the like there's considerably more risk involved in that uh, so yeah, like, like I'm being, I'm being socially coerced, uh, into doing this, uh, because the government is unwilling to, uh, to support me at the level I need. Whose fault is that? Uh, the, the government's fault. Like that's a, a, a systemic, uh, failure, uh, which is pushing me into this scenario. Mm -hmm. Um, it's clearly different than, uh, being trafficked. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, sex trafficking is a real problem. Um, the, the fact that, that, both of these things are illegal and seen as equivalent uh, is, uh, is I think, like a, like a problem uh, because it puts a lot of attention on uh, people in my situation uh, when I don't really need the attention. Uh, the people who need the attention uh, are people who are, being, who are being trafficked against their will. Right. Um, like those are the people that uh, need our support. That's the aspect of this that should be illegal. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, uh, like the the way that that the government has lumped the two groups together uh, obscures the real problem, right? Um, and I think uh, I think that's something that needs attention. 
Yeah, I also found it quite interesting in in reaching out to people for this podcast, and and I had one organization decline my uh, request because they said you've done a podcast on human trafficking, and we don't support anti human trafficking work because it actively works against sex workers. Do you think that that's the case? Do you think you you have to be um, not necessarily pro human trafficking, but not focus on it in order to support sex workers, or is there uh, a balance of saying, well, human trafficking is bad, but also uh, we need to acknowledge that in a way that doesn't harm sex workers. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't understand what their point is there. Um, it seems like it would be pretty easy to differentiate between the two. Like if we're if we're talking about somebody who's being trafficked, we're talking about somebody who has no autonomy, mm -hmm. uh, who's not in control of their of the finances. Like they're they're basically uh like um like they're not even working class you know like uh, uh not only do they not own the means of their production um but uh they're you know whoever is in control of them uh is the one making the decisions with their money uh, mm -hmm. they take their money um and then they pay them out of that money um and uh maybe right if if they pay them at all um and that seems like a fundamentally different relationship uh and uh, and like that seems fundamentally wrong um uh, in a radically different way than what's happening to me um, right like it's true that pornhub is still taking the lion's share of the profit from the videos that i have on their website uh, and same with only fans uh, they take 30 mm -hmm. percent um uh so uh like they're 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 obviously exploiting me um and uh but, but you know like like that's just kind of the way what am I going to do, right? Like, all I can do uh, is what I can. Um, there is no ethical consumption under capitalism. So I have to participate in the system uh, because it exists all around us. Um, right. And I guess there's also a distinction to be made between um, being exploited by a company when you sign an agreement with them as opposed to someone taking absolutely every aspect of control out of your hands. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> like... Um, absolutely uh, like i don't see um like i still have the freedom to leave pornhub and if i get my uh, if i get like a critical mass of uh, attention then uh, then yeah i can i can leave uh, and even if i don't even if i'm just like you know what i'm over it mm -hmm. uh, i don't feel like doing this anymore i can just stop right um and uh it, like if you're being trafficked you can't do that uh, mm -hmm. that's kind of the whole point um and is a human trafficker and a pimp the same thing? Or can you have a, a pimp acting in, in a manner where they're not taking advantage of sex workers? I don't know. Like, um, we're still operating within that framework of, uh, you know, somebody is the boss and somebody is the worker, right? Mm -hmm. um, only when you are a sole proprietor working for yourself uh, are you in a situation where you don't have where you don't have a boss and it's just you? Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, uh, so I, you know, I would I would suggest, you know, that would be that would depend on like the ratio of income that you're getting from that person. Are they listening to your uh, input? Or are you like, hey, um, I'm doing literally all of the work, mm -hmm. um, and you're just like you know, answering the phone basically and telling me when I have an appointment, uh, it seems like I should be getting the majority of the money and you, sh you should be getting a minority of the money. Right. So um, treating it like your average business situation, if, if the service they're providing is as a secretary, essentially, then, you know, they get paid as a secretary, but you are the, sure, the in, main thing. In as much as like the secretary tends to do more work than their boss. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like, uh, whereas in, in the, the pimp, uh, uh scenario, uh, the pimp is as the boss is not really doing anything. So, right. Um, right. Kind of the, kind of the inverse of that, but, but the spirit remains, uh, mm -hmm. the idea is still there. Yeah. Right. One of the terms that I've come across is swerve. Yeah. In, in my research. Do, uh, can you explain what a swerf is? Uh, well, they're, they're like a turf, mm -hmm. um, in the, it stands for, uh, a sex worker 
exclusionary uh, radical, exclusionary feminist, radical and, feminist and, and right. turf would be a trans exclusionary yeah. radical feminist right mm -hmm. um and these are these are femi feminists uh who see themselves who ex exclude uh sex workers from their safe spaces they consider sex workers to be unsafe mm -hmm. um so they don't want them around uh it's a it's a type of bigotry right um and uh uh, I don't know if this organization still exists, uh, but there was an organization that existed uh, in the Vancouver area, um, which uh, was like that. Uh, they would exclude both trans women uh, and sex workers from uh, their shelters. Right. Um, they recently lost uh, funding from the oh the great. city of Vancouver. They do still exist, but okay. they're lost at, funding. At least not great. being financially supported by the local government. Perfect. That's mm -hmm. great. Um, it would be nice if they would just stop existing, but uh, short of that, um, the fact that they lost their public funding is great. Mm -hmm. um, I have not encountered much with that, um, probably because the aspect of um, sex work that I interact with mostly, um, like in in the case of that organization, um, you like if if you had been uh, injured or assaulted while uh, uh, doing some sex work, um, and you went there. And you told them that that's why you needed shelter, uh, then they would turn you away. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, most of my pornography is with myself or with people I know, uh, so that doesn't really apply to me. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea that they would turn anybody away uh, for who who needed assistance uh, is, of course, insane to me. Right, absolutely. Um, uh, especially, uh, you know, in the case of trans women, of course, uh, and in the case of sex workers, of course, uh, like it just. I, definitionally you're there to help people uh and you're just like yeah except for those people right it's kind of like if you were to go to a hospital saying i need help because i you know just cut myself i need stitches or whatever it might be and, yeah. and they said well sorry we don't like some aspect of you so we're not going to help yeah you yeah it's like trans broken arm syndrome exactly <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 or i mean sex worker broken arm syndrome apparently yeah, yeah i guess something along those lines but i'm glad to hear that you personally haven't really experienced that um i have been lucky that's for sure. Yeah. What, I guess, we, we talked a little bit about uh, your experience with a dominatrix in the past and how maybe there was some subliminal um, messaging happening that, that prompted you to get involved in sex work. But can you point to uh, a more definitive aspect of your life that led you to, to wanting to be involved in sex work? Uh, uh, being on disability. Um, uh, like, I, I spent a lot of time thinking about um, how am I going to lift myself out of poverty? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what is in, in what way can I do that that isn't going to be too stressful, uh, isn't going to be too tiring, uh, and is going to be something I actually enjoy mm -hmm. and find rewarding? You know, I, after thinking about it for, a lot, for several years, uh, you know, I was like, well, you know, like it seems like a nice, easy thing to do, of course. Um, you know, great, I'll have sex with people and I'll get paid for it. Easy. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, but inevitably, the reality is not that easy, of course. Um, so I wanted to make sure that uh, my uh, my motivations were, uh, that I knew what I was getting myself into. Um, you know, I met other people who were, who were doing sex work of various kinds. Um, uh, you know, uh, one of my girlfriends is uh, a sex worker that sees clients. In seeing uh, how she, like, uh, deals with her clients and, uh, uh, like, the both the the trauma and the reward that comes along with that territory uh you know i had like a first front row seat uh to be able to consider like is this something that i really want to do mm -hmm. um do i want to expose myself to it uh, one of my partners also used to do sex work a lot um and uh, had numerous bad experiences mm -hmm. uh, very very bad experiences and i remember explaining to somebody else you know like maybe it's just not worth the trauma um, right you're sort of weighing the pros and cons of doing yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, you know, I, I, there's just nothing really else for me to do. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, you know, like, like, uh, I don't have the concentration available to like make YouTube videos. Um, and, uh, uh, but like I have the, but I still have this need to do something creative. I do want to express myself creatively. Um, and, uh, pornography helps me do that. Um, you know, like this, ultimately for me, it's about poverty and getting myself out of poverty. And right. uh, that's that's where seeing clients uh, comes into it. Um, there's a much higher, uh, you know, like the hourly rate on that is is pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the scheduling is uh, firmly in my control. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and scheduling is a very common problem for me. It's definitely part of my disability. Um, so, uh, I, yeah, like I just weighed the pros and cons and, and over time I'm like, yeah, what, what else, what other thing is going to give me, uh, similar opportunities, uh, that I can do entirely on my own. Um, you know, like I could probably help somebody. Um, with my IT background, if they were making YouTube videos, like I could do that. Mm -hmm. Um, but are they going to pay me enough to bring me out of poverty in doing that? Uh, probably not. Not until they're like a big, uh, YouTube channel. And that right. takes a long time to, to get there. Um, and I'm poor now. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I made YouTube videos for two years. I think I made a hundred bucks. So, yeah. 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 It takes a while. And, and if you're, you know, not not the person making the video, then you're only getting a fraction of what that person's getting. And yeah, yeah, I could definitely capitalism see that. Re rears its ugly head once again. So, yeah. um, and, and I mean that's like working with uh, friends, and and like one of my girlfriends makes YouTube videos, and she's in the same situation. You know, she's uh, definitely not made enough money to uh, to live on. Mm -hmm. um, never mind, pay me enough money to also live on. So, right. um, where is this money going to come from? Um, as much as I would like to just eat the rich. Uh, you know, I still can't bring that to the bank. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's interesting because every episode that we do of this podcast or almost every episode, we talk about the intersectionalities between the subjects that we're discussing. So we did a podcast on disability mm -hmm. and we talked about how the government doesn't give people enough money to live, live on. Yeah. Exactly. Like yeah. it's it's not just about you don't have enough money to go out and do fun things. It's you yeah. literally don't have enough money to pay rent yeah. or to get food or whatever. I need, it if is. I needed to pay, if I was required to pay my rent and food and medication bills all on my own, uh, I would, uh, I, I would be at a $400 deficit every month. Wow. Um, and, uh, and, and, and that's still an estimate. Mm -hmm. Uh, like that's, that's still, uh, oh, right. And that's staring at the wall. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's like, uh, you know, you're, you're not buying any video games. You're not going to the club. You're not going to the bar. Um, you're not buying any alcohol. You're not buying any weed. Mm -hmm. Um, you're going home, uh, and, uh, you know, you're scrolling down, uh, on whatever free service you can get access to. Right. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and that's still like where, you know, that $400 deficit, uh, is like, that's the, that's the internet bill too, you know, mm -hmm. like that's where who's, who is paying for the internet bill. Right. Uh, it, and that's hugely it, expensive in Canada. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and my phone bill. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. So where, where is this money supposed to come from? You know, I can't, they don't cover injections. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I take estrogen injections. Uh, so, uh, how am I going to pay for that? Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, uh, progesterone, how am I going to pay for that? What right. What do <laughs> Um, I'm going to sleep with people for money. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I record myself having sex with myself. <laughs> right. Well, and, and speaking about sleeping with um, people as opposed to doing sex work online, how do you make sure that you stay safe when you're doing that? Um, whether it's making sure that you are not being forced to do things against your will and making sure that you're safe from STIs, for instance. Like, how, how do you take care of yourself in that sense? Um, well, uh, the, the government does have a program for high risk people, um, uh, for prep. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I don't have to pay for that, which is nice. Um, they do make it very difficult, uh, to get it and stay on it though. Mm. Um, so that's annoying, uh, but at least it's free. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, like generally they need to wear a condom. Mm -hmm. Um, nobody likes getting a blowjob with a condom on though. So <clears throat> generally that's, that's a risk factor mm -hmm. um but at least i'm protected from hiv in that case mm -hmm. um so there's that there's the basics right mm -hmm. just kind of your standard safe sex practices that you might use at home would yeah. apply in those situations or if you meet you know if you meet a stranger at a club or something and you want to have sex with them it's the same kind of stuff right right um so pretty basic stuff um you get tested regularly uh testing is also free thankfully mm -hmm. um so uh, yeah, the basic stuff. Uh, and then also there are, um, there are some communities, uh, which, uh, monitor uh, very casually, 
Um, like, there's nothing formal, right? Uh, but, like, if you have a bad experience with a John, um, there's places you can go and be like, this is the person's name or, or phone number. Mm. Um, and uh, I had a bad experience with them. Uh, you know, you can explain the experience if you feel the need. And you can go to those places to look up the person that you're going to be yeah. spending time with? Yeah. There's also mm-hmm. an app, I think, um, that uh, uh, that will help that as well. Uh, like, you can label people. Um uh, again via their phone number um and uh if that can help give you a warning like you know like time wasters and and things like that right because uh, you get a lot of people a lot of people are, are just trying to text a, a hot girl and masturbate on the other end of their phone mm. um and uh, and that's money out of my pocket right so um you need to keep an eye open for them uh and then and also that same app will uh keep track of you know like this this guy was violent uh unexpectedly mm-hmm. Um, and right. things like that. So, and that's how you protect yourself against the physical violence side of things. Is is um, are there other avenues, or that's sort of the main one? Is you just look up, see if they're on this registry, and those are the avoid. main ones. Uh, also, uh, the buddy system is good. You know, having somebody nearby. Uh, that's that's going to be my main plan. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, fortunately, uh, I like strong girlfriends. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, many of my girlfriends are quite strong. So, uh, I feel quite safe with them around. Right. Um, and they would check it, like, if they haven't heard from you in a certain yeah. amount of time. Then yeah, like, it's an hour-long appointment. Um, so, uh, you know, if you haven't heard from me at this time, you know, I don't want to, like, when the hour's up, you got to you gotta fucking go. Get out of here. Mm-hmm. Uh, or else I'm going to charge you again. <laughs> right. So, uh, it should be it should be able, a relatively um, uh, consistent schedule. Uh, I know that's what it's like with my partner. Um, uh, she's been doing it for a very long time. So, uh, she is more comfortable doing things on her own. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, sometimes when she's seeing somebody new, uh, you know, like, I'll be there uh, in the other room and, you know, just a, just a quick mm-hmm, clear my throat sort of thing. And, <laughs> gotcha. and she often notices them, like, look, and like, well, there's somebody else here. And like, that's right. That's correct. So, right. Um, yeah. Uh, that's Those are the main things. I, I myself also know martial arts, and I'm kind of strong myself. So. Right. So yeah. taking some sort of personal um, courses or something along those lines to yeah. make sure that you, you have the ability to defend yourself if you yeah. need to. Uh, you know, like I I just, uh, I, I definitely believe personally in a multifaceted approach. Um, mm-hmm. But of course, that's easy for me. Like I can bank on my pre-existing martial arts experience. Um, so uh, yeah, you know, that makes things a little bit easier for me. Right. And do you think sex workers should have the ability to unionize? Oh, of course. Mm-hmm. Um why not? Just like any other yeah. job. Any other worker. Having yeah. that security. Well, like uh, I have friends in New Zealand uh, and uh, and it is legal there uh, mm-hmm. uh, under regulation. Um, and like like they have a central website that they sign up for. Um, and uh, I don't know the full process of how it works over there. I, presume, I don't know if they can, could, I mean, I don't know if they're technically a union. Uh, I know that uh, there's recently been protests over there. Uh, about treatment of strippers um and i think the strippers are being prevented from forming a union Hmm. um we're in a major gray area like if we were to actually try to unionize like who would we unionize uh against uh right at this point like there's there isn't even a central organization or, or even any kind of um like i mean there are brothels in vancouver uh, so presumably, unionizing would be open to them, but right if you don't have a boss, but yeah, of yeah. some kind, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I'd, we should probably unionize uh, against Pornhub, you know. <laughs> ah, right. Uh, and OnlyFans, yeah. Um, some collective action would be very helpful for us there. Uh, like the the rate of return on a Pornhub video is very low, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, it seems like it could probably be higher. Right. There's well, no that, union. Yeah, that's a good example. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned OnlyFans. Has OnlyFans mm-hmm. significantly changed the way that uh, people engage in sex work? Because, I mean, Pornhub has been an option for a lot longer, but it seems like OnlyFans is uh, a different business model in a sense. Uh, sort of. Um, OnlyFans is terrible. Um, okay. They're the worst. Um, I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> um the uh like the cut they take is 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 large uh, their website sucks there's no like app for my phone which you know i'm 
I'm sure if there was, I would hate that too, um, <laughs> because I'm sure they would have annoying things in it as well. They just seem hostile mm. uh, towards us. So it hasn't necessarily made sex work more accessible. I don't. I don't think public. so. Like the the problem with the problem with it is you can't use it to find people very well. Mm. Um, like if I if I actually tried to use it to like find people through OnlyFans, it's very difficult. Like you can find a specific person by searching for their username, but like if I, as someone who likes to masturbate, wants to masturbate. Uh, you can't really go there. Like it's more like it's more like you you find somebody on Pornhub and you're like, oh wow, uh, I'm I like this person's content. Uh, I would like to um, yeah, I would like to see them actually orgasm instead of the you know right up to the second where they're about to orgasm and then they cut uh, so that they can move their premium content onto something that has a larger payout rate. Um, oh, so so what happens in that instance? You you get to that point in the video and it tries to redirect you to a different site where you have oh, to pay oh, more they, money? Or? They say, they say you know, do you want to see the rest? Uh, they put like a little splash screen there. Uh, if you would like to see the rest, uh, check out my OnlyFans. Um, oh, I see. And uh, and then they'll have a link. Uh, or usually they, usually they just have their username like in, uh, in the video uh, and then you can go search for them. And I don't know. Also, usually they have the same model name on both services, mm -hmm. um, and you can probably, uh, I don't know how well Google interacts with OnlyFans now that I think about it, but presumably you could Google it, uh, you know, a model's name and uh, like Aphrodite Janeway, for instance, and uh, my uh, Pornhub uh, modeling profile and my OnlyFans modeling profile uh, would show up. Okay. Uh, and then uh, what I'm about to do, because... I do need to drive more people to my OnlyFans. Uh, as much as I dislike it, um, it is true that the payout, uh, and, and even though they take a large percentage of the payout, uh, the overall amount needed to access the content uh, is like on a monthly basis. Uh, so like $5 a month, uh, for example, uh, is uh, how much I charge for mine subscription. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, OnlyFans takes their percentage and then I get the rest. Um, oh, okay. So, uh, so like, there's a lot of incentive uh, to uh, to push people towards it, um, which is great from a uh, like a monetization point of view, um, but from like an accessibility point of view, uh, is not great. Um, I'm not one of these people that that loves paying for porn, um, especially since I'm poor. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I can't afford to pay for porn. Um, so, uh, I do love my free porn. Uh, so I, I kind of am at a bit of a, a philosophical crossroads. Um, I, I'm actually like literally just about to start monetizing my OnlyFans more. Okay. Um, because I, I need more fans. Uh, because again, uh, like, you know, like I get like a penny per view on Pornhub, um, which, uh, uh adds up, which is great. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm, trying to make up for, you know, like $6 an hour or something like that, right? Right. I guess um, it's more reliant on the views as opposed to the, the subscribers. Yeah. So, like, if I get one subscriber, you know, they're paying me $5 a month uh, as opposed to, like, to get $5 for one video, uh, that would be, that's thousands and thousands of, of watches. Mm -hmm. And so, does that mean that Pornhub will make their money off of selling ads on their website, yeah. and then you're getting a penny per view because someone has paid for an ad that is... Yeah, I'm getting some fraction of their ad revenue. Right. That, that they, that some that some other company uh, has paid them to advertise on. Right. And on does OnlyFans not have ads in that case? No. Okay. OnlyFans has no ads. So that would be the reason why someone would pay a subscription for OnlyFans as opposed to Pornhub? Yeah. A and also because it's paywalled, um, uh, anything... Like if you want to, if you want to actually see the content I have on there, you have to pay. Uh, so, um, so again, you know, like you, you get the, you get this part of the video on there and then the climax of the video, um, mm -hmm. you put on OnlyFans. Um, and, and I guess that might be helpful for people who, uh, are maybe worried about people in their lives finding out about their, the fact that they're involved in sex work. They might go, well, 
at least if I go on OnlyFans, someone will have to pay to get there as opposed to someone randomly stumbling across my video on Pornhub? Yeah, I, th I think so. Like, if I if I wanted to conceal the fact that I was making pornography, um, OnlyFans would, would probably be a good way to do that. Like, you, uh, you can have a model name, uh, and then uh, you can obscure your identity in your profile photo. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then only if you pay uh, will you be able to see the content uh, there. Right. And is that a common experience that people would, would try to hide it? Or do you kind of go, once I'm involved in making pornography of some kind, you just ha sort of have to assume that people are going to find out about it? I, I can't speak for other people in that one. Um, I, uh, I know some people don't want to do that. Uh, they don't, yeah, some people don't want other people to know that they're making pornography, but I, I don't care. Right. Um, you know, I, uh, my mom knows I make porn. So does my stepdad. I'm sure they try not to think about it. <laughs> um, and, uh, but you know, like it's, uh, it, it's something that I like to do, uh, and I, I will not be ashamed of myself. Right. Um, so, uh, and it doesn't yeah. create complications for you in your life to have people not yet. know. Yeah. Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and it, partially advantaged because I'm, uh, I'm disabled. Right. So, you know, like I'm not going to be a teacher, uh, you know, I'm not going to be, um, you know, a banker, uh. You know, any any of the uh, business opportunities that might come my way um, will probably will probably be related. You know, like if I get an IT job or something ever again. Um, but also, I, I also don't want any of those jobs. You know, like right. I don't I they don't, don't want to go back you. into IT uh, because I left it for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, so, um, if and also on a like on a personal level. Uh, I find the idea that anybody might care that somebody makes porn uh, offensive. Right. Um, so, like, if you do care that I make porn, uh, I think you're an idiot, and I don't want to work for you anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, that somewhat ironically, uh, a privilege, uh, given that I'm on disability, um, that I can have that attitude, uh, because at the very least, uh, disability will pay for the rent. So, uh, if nobody will hire me because I made porn uh, for a while... And, uh, and that's just so offensive, then, you know, I'll, I'll still be able to, to keep myself housed at least. Right. So thank you, uh, to disability for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's something that I, I consider as a trans person as well, right? Is, mm -hmm. is the moment I was publicly outed, I couldn't get jobs anymore. Yeah. At least through traditional methods. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, that's the, this, this is indeed a, uh, I have multiple partners uh, dealing with that particular issue right now. Um, one of my partners is very talented, uh, and uh, she's been having uh, tons of difficulty uh, finding work. Um, and uh, it's funny, too, because her family just does not understand. <laughs> like, what do you mean uh, you're having difficulty finding work? Tons of work out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and on the one hand, uh, she, is, she is being a little bit picky because um, she doesn't want to be a bartender anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, uh, and and then on the other hand, you know, she's trans. Yeah. You know, and people are like, oh, uh, oh, a trans woman. Oh, mm -hmm. we don't really, I don't know what to make of trans women. Trans men are great, though. Hire a bunch of them. I don't, I don't think people realize how much um, uh, an employer's perception of you can affect your ability to get a job. I mean, it sounds simple from like a one-on-one -on -one basis, but when you're actually yeah. putting resumes out to multiple companies yeah. and you look at the statistics of how many times am I successful when I send out a resume? Mm -hmm. Like I used to send out two resumes and I'd get a job interview yeah, yeah. out of that. Yeah. Now I'll have to send out 200 resumes to get a job interview yeah. because you Google my name, you find out I'm trans, you find out I'm involved in green party politics and yeah, yeah, for whatever, yeah. whether it's and you're on one or the other. you the word social justice in the name. Well, there's know? that now, yeah. yeah but yeah. fortunately that's my job now. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, yeah, but it, it can really make a difference. So I think that's an important Absolutely. point. I've had this discussion with people in the gaming industry as well. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, they're like, if you, if you come out while you're working in the gaming industry, probably going to be okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you come out and then you want to get a job in the gaming industry, definitely going to struggle. Right. Um, and uh, it's a lot easier to not hire someone than to try to find a reason to fire them that's not yeah. the yeah. actual reason. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um yeah it's it's a it's a common problem it's a very mm -hmm. common problem it's very hard to get work as a trans woman yeah absolutely um but that's not today's topic <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah we've done that topic and we'll probably do it again at some point um but coming back to sex work what supports are sex workers lacking we've touched on a few um but if you had to sort of pinpoint some of the major issues 
of of either governmental support, societal supports, whatever it might be. What what do you think is lacking? Um, God, what isn't? Um, uh, yeah, like obviously, uh, legal support uh, mm -hmm. is is lacking. Um, just trying to uh, like trying to trying to be safe, trying to get trying to do things in a safe way uh, is is difficult. Um, you know, like again, we're in this gray. We exist in this gray area, mm -hmm. uh, both uh, legally and culturally, socially, and uh, and really in uh, when it comes to socially, uh, like we're a little bit worse than a gray area. You know, I can I can just imagine what my extended family must think. Um, I'm sure it's a secret to them. Uh, mm. But uh, uh, but yeah, like like you know, the, the support is lacking all around. Uh, you know, like. The, there's no collective bargaining for us. Um, mm -hmm. uh, most of our work is decentralized. Uh, so like like the like Pornhub, uh, like we're all working out of our own apartments mm -hmm. uh, or, or on set. Uh, so our ability to uh, collectively bargain uh, is compromised right from the start. Uh, and again, legally, uh, like our ability to get to be protected, to receive protection from the state. Um, like if, if I needed to call the police, uh, and get some help from them, uh, something I would hopefully never have to do for a very long list of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I like I'm not sure if I can do that. Um, uh, certainly, the police have a history of not treating sex workers very well, especially trans sex workers. Yeah, I've um, heard reports of people being dropped off on the other side of the city by police officers yeah. when they call for help. Or... Yeah, so like you know, so if if somebody like if if uh, if a John is like violent uh, in my house. Uh, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like my big plan is for me and my girlfriends uh, to take care of it right. uh, because I'm not in a position where I can rely on the law. Uh, even even if they were close enough um, to, to actually like get there in time to be of any help, um, I'm just as likely to be injured by the police officer as I am by the angry John. Right. Um, so, uh, so there's that as well. Yeah. And I guess as far as state uh, solutions as well. There's, uh, I mean, for you being on disability, you, you, you talked about how you can fall back on that income if you have to, but mm -hmm. someone who's not, who is getting their sole income from sex work, I, I imagine you can't apply for EI. Uh, I'm sure the government would prefer if you declared that income. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not sure if it's a good idea to do that. From a safety standpoint? Uh, from a safety standpoint. Um, yeah, that's complicated. That's that's something that I'm uh, very much in the middle of figuring out. Yeah, the government ha has this weird, has a very strange attitude towards us. Like, uh, I know somebody who is uh, starting the entrepreneurship program uh, in Vancouver, uh, where like they're paying her to start up her business. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things she's not allowed to make is pornography. Oh, like uh, it's a stipulation of a contract yeah, or something? Yeah, it's a YMCA contract. Oh. Uh, and uh, it says you're not allowed to make uh, pornography. And it's because of how it would reflect on the business? I I, I don't know. You know, they don't explain themselves mm -hmm. in the paperwork. They just say, don't do it. Yeah, I, um, I remember hearing a, a story of a teacher who had an OnlyFans account and was told to uh, delete the account or be fired, basically, yeah. because yeah. they didn't think it reflected well on the school um, they didn't think it was appropriate for a teacher who's involved in kids to hate, do adult things. In yeah, their like I hate those words time. too. Like I hate the word appropriate. Yeah, um, that like it's used so much as a weapon. It's uh, so subjective and, too, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, like the word professionalism. People love to wield it uh, against other people, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and I just think it's bullshit. Uh, on the one hand, if she is doing it because she enjoys it, then that that's that's good. That's mm -hmm. like a good thing. Expressing yourself is a good thing. Right. Uh, everybody should be allowed to do that. And um, it's behind a paywall. So I'm trying to think like if a student is underage, they're, they're not, not going to be able to get to, there. That's right. a very good point. Um, and, uh, and the idea that it would reflect poorly on the school uh, doesn't have anything to do with the school. Mm -hmm. uh, she just works there. Uh, and uh, if the school really didn't like it, maybe they should pay the teachers a little bit more. I mean, that would be uh, nice. So because again, uh, usually the, the reason it's happening in the first place uh, is because uh, somebody is not making enough money. Uh, mm -hmm. And they're looking for ways to monetize, uh, to make more money, to f to fill a financial deficit in their life. And um, if if you have uh, if you have the skill uh, and the interest, uh, the personality uh, to try and do that, uh, mm -hmm. then then you should. 
Yeah, and I think that's and becoming more and more of an issue too. People who have great jobs theoretically still can't afford basic living expenses because wages aren't keeping up with inflation. So yeah. as time progresses, it, it's as if everyone's just getting poorer and poorer. Yeah. Most people are. Uh, I recently listened to a podcast where uh, a teacher was talking about how he wanted to buy a house and he couldn't afford to buy a house in the area he was living. And, yeah. and uh, one of the comments on it was, well, you know, we failed as a society of the people who are educating our kids can't afford to buy a home where yeah, yeah. they live. Um, and he was at, at the point of considering, do I give up teaching in order to achieve this dream of just having a place to live? Yeah. Right. It's, it seems like a pretty simple dream, but yeah, yeah. Um, you couldn't have both essentially, or, or if you did want to have both, you'd have to do something like OnlyFans or some other type of side gig. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. Um, it's, it's a major problem. Uh, I've, I've heard also, um, the example, if, uh, if the person who makes your coffee can't afford to live in the city uh where you're getting the coffee uh you don't live you don't live in a walkable city that's what it is about mm -hmm. walkable cities you don't live in a walkable city you live in a theme park mm -hmm. um and uh, i think about that a lot uh because of course there is a coffee shop just up the street uh and uh it's like i can barely afford to live in this area yeah um i mean i i commute to work uh at I mean, I still don't think I could afford to live in the city, but um, when I was younger, I definitely couldn't. So it was, you're going to commute 45 minutes to an hour just so you can afford a place to live and also have a job that pays the bills. Mm -hmm. um, that was a necessity for me. But I think about the fact that as things get more and more expensive, we're pushing people further and further out. And then yeah. you you add on tolls, which can prevent oh, yeah. people from getting to where they need to work. And eventually you push people so far out that commuting is not even an option. Yeah. And I think we're getting close to that point uh, here in Vancouver. And I think what, what happens when you do get to that point? Because I, you lose yeah. all of those restaurant workers, um, like, like you mentioned. I mean, that, that's the situation we're in right now. Like mm -hmm. if I, um, if, if we assumed I was making minimum wage, uh, uh, I can't afford to live. Uh, like I need to move 30 to 45 minutes away. Mm -hmm. Um, like the, by, only by virtue of uh, of being too too poor to leave my apartment, uh, am I still able to afford to live in the area? Mm -hmm. uh, because I I moved in there like ten years ago, and um, uh, you know, th thankfully they can only raise the the rent so much per year. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like I'm paying like a thousand dollars less than uh, less than that actually. Um, but uh, but almost that much uh, less than some of the other tenants in my apartment building, right? Uh, because other people have moved out, and then when people moved in, uh, the company uh, which owns my building um, uh, significantly raised the rent for those people, right? Um, but I've, thankfully, I'm grandfathered in and I'm able to stay there. Uh, but of course, uh, the landlords do not want me to stay because right. I'm costing them uh, thousands of dollars uh, a year. Mm -hmm. And and now we're starting to sort of intersect with our housing and wealth and equity podcast episodes, yeah, which we've yeah. done. So while, um, while I was thinking a lot about this podcast, I'm like, we're going to end up talking about disability a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of like like I mentioned earlier. It's the case with all of our episodes; they're always intersecting with each other. Yeah. And uh, bringing it again back to sex work a little bit more specifically, uh, we're getting close to the end of the questions that I have for you. So at this point, is there anything? related to sex work that we haven't talked about that you think would re be really important to raise for our listeners? I'm, my my main concern uh, has definitely been the, the intersection of disability and sex work. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the, the thing I was most excited to talk about today. The way that, uh, uh, like, like porn is the thing that I like to make. Uh, I'm, uh, as I said, uh, much more concerned about seeing Johns uh, because it's just inherently more dangerous that way. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, I prefer to not have to do that. But given the, you know, complete lack of movement uh, on uh, paying uh, disabled people enough money to live, that's, you know, that's, that's what's on my mind, right? Mm -hmm. So um, the, the government of Canada is really the, uh, the human trafficker then? It, it, yeah, you know, <laughs> like, especially the, technically, uh, yeah, like the, the BC government uh, is, uh, is the one that uh, decides how much money I get. Mm, right, um, right, right, and uh, and they they also forced me to 
to be paid out of my own pension as well. So, uh, which is taxable. Wow. So I had to, I had to pay taxes on my disability, which is below minimum wage. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> and I'm like, and, and so like, like that happens, right? And I'm like, how am I going to deal with this? Like, what is the way out uh, of this problem? Um, the, the government clearly not going to help. Mm -hmm. um, I have been writing the uh, financial minister uh, for a long time. In fact, almost every time I cannot do something because I can't afford to do it, I send the financial minister an email explaining that I cannot do this because you are underpaying us. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been doing that for a long time, uh, uh, basically since I've been on disability, uh, which is at least five years now. Um, and, uh, and, you know, basically nothing is happening. Uh, we are supposed to be getting uh, this increase uh, of $125, uh, which you'll note uh, will still not bring us <laughs> to uh, uh, minimum wage. Right. Uh, and it's, it's coming out of, uh, that's only being applied to the housing portion as well. Um, so depending on how your uh, uh, how your housing arrangement is being paid for, uh, you may not get uh, all of that money as well. Right. Uh, if you live in BC housing, you don't get any of that money. Oh, uh, your money does not change because that it goes directly to them, right? Um, they, oh. whereas like in, if you have a classical landlord arrangement, uh, they pay me and then I pay the landlord. But if you're in BC housing, they pay uh, for your rent directly. Right. Uh, so it wouldn't actually put any extra money in the pocket of anybody living in BC housing. Um, that's interesting. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that that's unfortunate. So yeah, like like I I feel like that's the most important thing about uh, sex work in British Columbia and Canada. Um, like uh, like people definitely do it uh, for fun uh, and uh, and for freedom uh, and uh, for enjoyment uh, and that's great. Uh, people should totally be allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. um, where things get murky is where people are forced to do it because. Uh, of their financial situation, um, right, and that that's when things get bad. That's when that's when people get desperate, uh, and when and that's when desperate and desperate people make mistakes um, mm -hmm. that they see Johns that they shouldn't. Um, you know, like everybody, everybody tells everybody if you've got a bad feeling, if you listen to your gut, uh, if you're texting with somebody and you're like, I don't know about this guy, uh, stick with that feeling and just say no. Right. So sex work is work. Sex work should be legal, but people should have the ability to consent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I try to end all of these episodes with a question around what our audience can do to help. So um, what can our listeners do if they're thinking, um, I want to make sure sex workers are better supported? Uh, whew, there's so much that could be done. First of all, um, sex work needs to be legalized and regulated in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, at the very least in British Columbia, uh, it'd probably be easiest to start at lo more local level and then go out from there. Uh, people are worried about like creating a central database that sex workers are members of. Um, uh, I think that concern is fair and maybe there's some creative solution around that, but, but ultimately that's, that's the basic idea that I think and like the minimum, uh, thing that needs to be done to protect, uh, sex workers of all types. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, Removing the desperation component of sex work uh, was is another very important thing. So, uh, making sure that people are compensated financially uh, for being alive uh, properly. So, like you know, wages across the board need to go up. Minimum wage needs to go up. Uh, the disability rate should probably be tied to the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, that's ignoring the fact that being disabled is more expensive. Right. Um, so and both should, should probably be tied to inflation as well. Both should be tied to the cost of living, even. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, I think I think I think those things at the very basic level uh, would help a lot. You know, maybe a universal basic income if we're going to get real fancy. Mm -hmm. um, I support that. Yeah, uh, like I think that the, those things uh, would go a very long way. Um, and it would be relatively simple to implement towards protecting uh, sex workers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, keeping us safe because when things things are illegal, uh, it just it tends to be unsafe. 
mm-hmm. you know, some regulations would be very helpful in that regard, I think. Thank you so much for joining me on the yeah. podcast. It's been a, great to speak with you, to catch up. It's been a while since I saw you last. Yeah, indeed. And My pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this has been a social justice podcast. I'm your host, Nicholas Sperling. Today's topic has been sex work, and I've been joined by Aphrodite Janeway. You've been listening to a social justice podcast hosted by Nicholas Sperling, brought to you by The Flag Shop, and inspired by a social justice coloring book.